What was Venice Beach before? So imagine when a baby was born in the year 1900, she lived only up to the age of 47. The major health challenges were infectious disease, and microbes were the causes of disease. So scientists came up with antibiotics and vaccines to save life. And now, in the year 2017, when a baby is born, she is expected to live a long, healthy life of up to 80 years. But as we grow old, almost all of us will suffer from at least one or more chronic disease. That's obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even cancer. And the scary thing is, the cure is rare. The medical cure works best only when it's combined with healthy lifestyle. But what is lifestyle? It's very confusing because it ranges from how many fruits and vegetables we eat in a day to taking 10,000 steps to be mindful. So we wanted to fit all of these into a very simple and crisp definition, and we came up with this. Lifestyle is what, when, and how much we eat, sleep, and move on a daily basis. Almost all of you know what we eat affects our health, and how much we eat also makes us healthier, sick. What about when? We're not talking about eating breakfast. We're talking about a different time and why the timing matters. The reason timing matters is all of our bodies have a timing system or a clock that runs on a 24 hours basis or called circadian clock or circadian rhythm. For example, if you lock me inside this room with no access to any timing, then I will go to sleep around 10 p.m. at night. And my deepest sleep will happen around 2. And anticipating morning, my body will start to warm up. And as soon as I wake up, my melatonin level will drop and stress hormone level will rise. So around noon, my brain will be at its peak performance time. And around afternoon, my muscle will be at its peak performance time. And as the evening sets in, my body will cool down and melatonin level will rise, and again I'll go back to sleep around 10 p.m. It will go on and on every 24 hours. So overall, this biological clock, or circadian rhythm, organizes our life into sleep, nutrition, and physical activity to the right time of the day. These three fundamental pillars of our health have to happen at the right time. And if we stay awake late into the night, finishing an assignment, or taking care of the loved ones, the next day we feel horrible. And if we continue to do this, then our clocks break down, and we get a host of different diseases. And this is just a small, simple subset of those diseases that range from ADSD, asthma, diabetes, obesity, depression, anxiety, and even up to cancer. So this tells us how important a circadian clock is. But how does the system work? So over the past 20 years, what we have discovered is every morning as we open our eyes, the bright light signals through our retina and synchronizes a small part of the brain that has master circadian clock to the day and night cycle. And this brain clock sends hormonal signal to the rest of our body. But what is really surprising is this. Just like our brain has a clock, almost every organ in our body, even every cell in our body, has its own clock. And the brain signal synchronizes all these clocks, so they work together to produce daily rhythms in behavior, physiology, and metabolism. And when we move from one time zone to another time zone, or when the long summer days transition into short winter night, short winter days, then what happens is the change in daylight is sensed by our eyes, and then our clock resets to the new day length. But very surprising thing that kind of confused scientists for almost 100 years was this. 
Even blind people, when they move from one time zone to another time zone, they could reset their clock perfectly fine, as if there was a hidden light sensor in the eye we didn't know about. So almost 15 years ago, we made a huge discovery that made it to the top 10 breakthroughs of the year by the prestigious science magazine. And the discovery was we found the blue light sensing protein called melanopsin that's present in 5,000 squiggly neurons in our eye. And the same protein is found in both normal people and also blind people. And these neurons are literally hardware to the master clock in our brain. But these neurons actually work slightly differently. In a moonlight night, you may be able to see moonlight, or you can see candlelight, but that light is not enough to fully activate melanopsin. So the brain thinks it's dark. So our body's natural sleep hormone melatonin rises at night, and we get good night's sleep. And next day, when you wake up and go outside for an hour on the bright light, that bright daylight fully activates melanopsin. It resynchronizes our clock to the day-night cycle. It improves alertness. We feel less sleepy and reduces depression. But over the last 100 years, we have moved into indoor spaces. We spend more than 90% of our time indoor. And the bright light and bright screen at night activates melanopsin. It reduces sleep hormone melatonin and we have sleep disruption. And the next day, when you wake up to an alarm clock and stay most of the day indoor, it further confuses our clock because our body doesn't get enough light to resynchronize our clock. And if it continues, then we get depression and anxiety. And that's why light for vision is not same as light for health. This was a very simple idea 15 years ago. But that has started a new revolution in lighting. In fact, now, architects and lighting engineers are coming up with new circadian lighting for buildings of the future. And right now, almost every smartphone and every laptop produced comes with an automatic program to change the screen brightness and screen color at night. So it's really humbling to see a very simple discovery we made 15 years ago the fruits of those discoveries have already raised billions of people, and there is knowledge in their hand to improve their circadian rhythm. But we did not stop there. We knew that people who sleep less or sleep late become sick. So we wanted to know what happens when people don't sleep enough. So when we peer into lighted cities or lighted buildings or into lighted living rooms of people, then people don't just stare at lighted screen at night. As long as they stay awake, they eat. So that means as long as our eyes are open, our mouth is open. <laughs> so we wanted to know what is the effect of food on our circadian clock. So we went back to lab, and we made another huge discovery. That is, just like light at night disrupts our brain clock and keeps us awake, food at the wrong time can disrupt circadian rhythm and disrupt our normal metabolism. But how do we figure that out? So just imagine, suppose say in the morning, you have your first breakfast. As soon as we have that first meal, the body starts to use carbohydrates as energy and stores a little bit of fat. And as we continue the day with lunch and dinner, a body continues burning carbs and storing fat. And in the evening, after the last meal, as we continue into the night, then the body runs low on carb and starts to burn some fat. So every day, if this rhythm continues, then we have this complementary or opposite rhythm in burning sugar and burning fat. And these two rhythms actually help us maintain body weight. But what happens if we just extend that last meal late into the night? So in this case, our body's circadian rhythm becomes much shallow. So it continues to make fat for a very long period of time. And there is not enough time, actually, to burn fat naturally. So imagine if we compare the same person eating everything within 10 hours, we'll have a very robust circadian rhythm in metabolism, and we'll have few hours of burning fat. And the same person spreading the calories over 15 hours may not reap that benefit. Was it a wild thought? Or there is some truth to it? 
So we went back to the lab, and then we brought two identical set of mice, the same age, born to the same parents in the same room. And we gave one group of mice a fatty food, and they could eat whenever they wanted. And the second group was trained to eat the same identical diet, and the same number of calories every day. And we weighed the mice and weighed the food every week to make sure that these two groups ate the same number of calories. And we did this for 18 weeks, and at the 18 weeks, there was something really surprising. The mice that ate this fatty food random time were obese, they could not burn enough fat, and mice that ate the same number of calories from the same fatty food were 28% less. And the reduction in body weight was largely due to reduction in body fat. And this was really a eureka moment, because for 100 years, nutrition science has taught us to count calories and watch carb, protein, and fat in our diet. And what we discovered is, it's not only what you eat, when you eat also matters. So we went back to the lab again, and then made sure that what we're discovering is true and applies to a lot of different diets. So we brought mice and gave them food for eight hours, nine hours, 10, 11, or 12 hours. Sometimes we even gave the mice weekend off, as if they were partying. And then sometimes we gave them food uh, that was high carb, high uh, fat, high sucrose, even high cholesterol. And when we go back and compare these two groups of mice, the result came out always the same. Mice, when they eat all their food within eight to 12 hours, remain healthy, irrespective of what food they eat. Whereas mice that eat random time, they become fat. And there are two surprising things that also came out. One is, if we take fat mice and give them food within eight to 10 hours, then they become normal and all their sickness goes away. And if we take healthy mice, eating healthy food, but randomly throughout 24 hours, then over a period of time, they also become sick. This was really eye-opening. And what all of these mouse experiments told us was just like our brain has a clock to make us sleep and wake up every day, all our organ clocks need some downtime to rest, reset, and re rejuvenate every day. So we wanted to test when do people actually eat and can they change this behavior? So we started a study, and that's actually all online and with app. People can go to this website, mycircadianclock.org, sign up, and then download an app. And people love taking pictures of everything. So we asked them to take pictures of everything that they eat, drink, over two to three weeks period. And when these pictures come to our server, we organize them on a time scale so that it's easy for us to see how the eating pattern is. So as we line up this, um, uh, this timing of the food along time scale, we also see something very interesting. That is, most people, at least this particular example, eats very randomly. And you all can actually sign up. This study is open to all of you. And you can download the app, and you can see your own photograph. And what is interesting is, if we look at this person's eating pattern during weekday and weekend, they all look random. And if we combine the data to weekdays or weekend, then what we find is, although this person did not travel, it almost looks like he ate in one time zone during weekdays and went to another time zone in weekend. And if we combine this and plot it around a clock so that it's easy for you to figure out how this person ate over 24 hours, then what you'll find is this person could eat any time of the 24 hours. You might say that this is all random, one outlier. But actually, almost all 150 people in our study who had a regular 9 to 5 job and claimed that they eat healthy had similar eating pattern. The bottom line is 50% of adults eat for 15 hours or longer. So that means if your first sip of coffee was at 6 o'clock in the morning, your last sip of wine or last bite might be at 9 or later at night. So with this knowledge, we asked a very simple thing. If we take overweight people who eat for 15 hours or longer and ask them to choose their own 10 hours that fits their lifestyle and eat everything that they want within that 10 hours, what happens? 
So in the first group of people, we, we brought some people who were overweight and they were eating for 15 hours. We asked them to choose their 10 hours. They did that for 16 weeks. And after 16 weeks, they weighed less. And then we let them go free. After one year, we brought them back to the lab. Surprisingly, they still maintained their lost body weight. And when we asked them, why did you stick to this habit? It was not the body weight loss that they were, uh, they were excited about. They said they could sleep better. They felt more energetic throughout the day. Their joint pains reduced, so they could go for a walk or a run. And this was really exciting. And in the next phase, over the last one year, thousands of people from all over the world are signing up for our study, and they're sharing their data, and they're sharing our, their experience with what happens when they reduce their timing of eating and be, become more disciplined and eat for 10 to 12 hours. And all of these are teaching us one big thing. That is, a body's biological clock is just like a simple scheduling program. It has programmed us to eat and sleep at the right time of the day or night. And if we stick to this, our appointment with our biological clock, then we stay healthy. And just like showing up randomly at work can ruin your career, showing up for lunch, breakfast, and dinner, or for your sleep at random time of the day can ruin your health. But the good news is, this is all reversible. Even if we have some chronic condition, if we select our 10 to 12 hour sitting period and sleep well, we can reverse or cure a lot of chronic diseases that affect more than a billion people on this planet. Thank you.